So this is, I need parts, like this external oblique, you know, everything needs to get sculpted here, but how much do you go and use this maquette process? Do, you, do I want to fill everything in? Well, I would do this as an anatomical exercise. And in fact, I do do this. I should preface that. I do do this as an anatomical exercise. Not for class, for myself. Exercise is important. So I do that quite frequently. I'll just get in and quickly build these guys up. Okay, uh, now we need to use, we need to start sculpting. So how are we gonna start sculpting? That's gonna start bringing us in to um, DynaMesh. And my notes tell me not to introduce this, but this is the point to start talking about it. So I'm gonna go into Geometry, I'm going to go into DynaMesh, and by default, DynaMesh is set to uh, 128, which is quite high, and I'm just going to click DynaMesh. It's going to take a moment. And there we go. What did it do? Well, it unified everything and gave it all quite a lot of polygons. So let's see how we can adjust this. I'm going to undo, back to my geometry the way it was, and I'm going to set my resolution down to, let's say, as low as it can go. Let's say 8. And I'm going to click DynaMesh. See what it does? So the polygon is smaller with more resolution, which basically means that resolution is like your, you know, it's, your, it's the HD resolution of your TV. How much can you get? Well, you increase the resolution, you're going to get more. You decrease it, you get less. But we want to keep it low. Even 64 is too high. We want to set this down to 32. Maybe even lower than 32. 24. I really want, I like 8. You know, it's rare that I like that, but that's, that's where we're going to go. Now, keep in mind, though, I have something on. I have this project on. If that's not on, then DynaMesh will tend to smooth out form. If it is on, then it will project it and keep the shape intact. So we, we, you can turn that on, you can turn it off, it doesn't matter. But really, the key is your resolution. Now, what is this resolution doing? How does this work? This is really important. Because remember, I told you, DynaMesh has been in ZBrush since before ZBrush 2. But they just didn't put it into this new little feature in there, this, this, this separate little section. They were missing something. So if I was to tell you guys, this is for the guys who know ZBrush. This is a test for you. What, where did DynaMesh used to be? What was the feature that was basically DynaMesh before DynaMesh? Somebody said Shadowbox. I'd say even earlier than that, Remesh, Extract. Extract came with ZBrush 3 before that. We're talking ZBrush 2. Make 3D from alpha, close. Not project. I bet you guys have never even really looked at this uh, feature. Most people don't. Corbin, you're close. Adaptive skin, but it's not adaptive skin. It's not unify, but it is unified skin. So every model has this. 
But z-spheres are what made the most use out of it. This is Dynamesh. This is the old Dynamesh. And it wasn't functional like Dynamesh is today because they didn't have this, ex this last algorithmic step where they inflated the model and they, they basically made the topology much more friendly. And I remember the, uh, I was in a meeting with the developers and, and, and they said, wouldn't it be cool if you could just project a grid of topology onto your model? They were saying, well, let's assume your model takes up this space. And what we're going to do is just take a grid from a 2D grid from this space. And we're going to just project those squares onto them. And then let's say we come from this angle. And we're going to pull and project topology from this direction. They sent that to me. <laughs> I'm in this meeting. And, you know, I'm the, inner, I'm the, I'm the ZBrush go-to guy. Uh, if you know Paul Gabry, Paul Gabry is doing the job, uh, one of the jobs I used to do there. And... Um, and uh, so, you know, I'm like, I'm, I got a little bit of an ego. I'm like, what do you mean? Why would anybody want to project topology onto a model? What are you talking about? I didn't say it like that, obviously. We had a, a fantastic relationship, and, I, and I, we do today, too. I love all of them. Um, I was like, no, no, no. What we really need is we need that topology brush thingy. You know, we need that tool, something like this. <laughs> and then... You know, Dynamesh comes out after I'm, I'm not working with the company anymore. And I'm like, oh, I'm such an idiot. Dynamesh is like the most revolutionary thing to happen to us. And, you know, what, six years ago we are talking about it and, and, I'm, and I'm saying, ah, it's not a good idea. <laughs> shows, you, shows you how far ahead these guys are. And they don't listen, you know. I mean, the head of development has a clear vision, and he knows what he wants uh, his guys to do, and uh, and that's that. You know, he takes feedback, but he just listened. To, he listened to me say no, 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 and he uh, and then ignored me the rest of the conversation <laughs> until we talked again. Uh, and now we have Dynamesh. So, unified skin. Let me show you this, and it'll explain what Dynamesh is in a nutshell. So all I got to do is say, click Make Unified Skin. It doesn't affect this model. It makes another model with that skin. And so there's a problem. There's no spacing here, no space between the arms and the legs. And that's a resolution issue. So I need to increase my resolution and then say make unified again. It's going to take over my computer, so one second. And I'm back. All right. So I'm getting more resolution. And doesn't that look a lot like a Dynamesh? Let's see what Dynamesh does. Oh my, that looks a lot like Dynamesh. Not too far, right? I mean, all the way to having that same problem right here. But what you'll notice is that they're able to do more with less. So that was an improvement in the algorithm. And also, it's not pure grid, pure front view, side view. You know, he's able to get some of the roundness in there. And it's a little bit nicer blended. But it's the same thing. You see these triangles in the shoulder. It's the same thing. It's been there forever, for a very long time. But what is it? Let me just explain what it is. And one more step to explain what it is. I'm going to turn smooth off. It's completely off. And this is where you get to see what Unified Mesh and Dynamesh are actually doing. Make Unified Skin. Let 
And there you go. Can you see that? Can you hear me okay? It doesn't take up too much of my processor. But what's DynaMesh? It's Legos. It's basically building your model with Legos and then skinning it, not even skinning it, just melting the surface. Watch this. Whoa. I just melted the Legos. Lego topology, and I have DynaMesh. Why didn't somebody think about that before? <laughs> it's so simple and so awesome. And that's what it does. But it is amazingly powerful because what DynaMesh is doing is it replaces it on the fly. So you don't, it doesn't create an extra model. It literally adjusts the topology of this model. All right. So I wanted to explain DynaMesh and really give you the history of it and, uh, and just a little bit more information about it, kind of how it functions. It's really significant when you see the connection between Legos and Unified Skin. And really the single most important thing um, in my view about, this, about that demo is that you understand how some cool new feature can have this really ancient origin because there is a system that the developers are working in. They didn't develop brand new code for it. It was there for a while. They just couldn't get it the way they wanted. So, it, you know, it just stayed as a, as a palette for a bit. Almost every single feature that you see, all these new things about ZBrush uh, and these new features, they're all built on these old things because the system is pretty clear where the uh, pixelator wants to go he's got that roadmap the algorithms are catching up to his brain 